Goswami compares Krishna to the whirl of a lotus flower and all the gopas to be the petals of that lotus flower. So many petals. And they were joking and playing. And Krishna performed a great mystical feat at that time because each boy was so eager to reciprocate their love with Krishna through joking and talking and just glancing and smiling at one another. And each boy was seeing that Krishna's only looking at me. He's only smiling at me. Each boy was seeing that Krishna's back was towards so many others. And everyone is looking, everyone is just looking at Krishna, and Krishna's only looking at me. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of boys, and they're all thinking like that, and they're in circles around him. Lord Chaitanya performed that same leela. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, there's a story when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came into Puri, actually he was in Puri, when all the devotees from Bengal came from Navidweep, Shantipur, Kuli Nagram, Kulia, all these places, they came to Puri. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this one year he met them all at Narendra Sarovar, this beautiful lake where there's a boat festival for Radha Govinda the Vijay Utsav Murti of Jagannath. And then he took them to Jagannath's temple for kirtan and divided them into various kirtan groups. And they danced and chanted in the temple of Jagannath and then they circumambulated with kirtan in the temple of Jagannath. And as they were all dancing and all singing, there were seven groups with so many devotees in each group and every single devotee, they were all in big circles around Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they all were feeling that Lord Chaitanya is only looking at them. Now this didn't make them materially proud that I'm better than all others. Actually for a true devotee, when you get mercy, special mercy, it humbles us, doesn't, we don't think, I'm getting what no one else is getting. I'm better. Rather, that Krishna is so causelessly, inconceivably merciful. He's so great. He's so loving. He's so compassionate that he's giving, he's giving little me this special mercy. That makes us actually infinitely humbled by Krishna's greatness. We become proud of Krishna, not of ourselves. That is spiritual consciousness. So every devotee was thinking, Lord Chaitanya is only looking at me. His beautiful lotus eyes. Our scriptures tell us Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his face was like a full moon, golden in color. And his lotus eyes expanded practically to his ears. And they were so wide, so beautiful. Srimati Radharani's love is manifesting through his glance. And that glance is every devotee is thinking, I'm his and he's mine. And the comparison is given. This pastime was the identical pastime of when Krishna was sitting in the bank of Yamuna and every gopa is thinking, Krishna's only looking at me. 
or during the Ras Lila. Each gopi is thinking, so many gopis and Krishna's dancing with me. Krishna's Rasa Bihari. Rasa Bihari means he's supremely the reciprocator of love. In the spiritual world, there are innumerable, countless living beings. And yet, Krishna, every flower, every blade of grass, every calf, every cow, every bird in the trees, every tree, every insect, Every gopa, gopi, elder, younger, even the babies, everyone is thinking that Krishna is so personally, uniquely, intimately reciprocating with my love and giving me his love. When we understand the nature of Krishna's love, it's, there's no there's no possibility of envy. Because in this world, Srila Prabhupada explains jealousy or envy is when somebody has something I don't have. It's intolerable. Whether they're, they, somebody doesn't have, if I don't have your wealth, or if I don't have your beauty, or if I don't have your fame, or if I don't have your, your, your skills, or if I don't have the blessings or the empowerments that you're getting, or the recognition, we become envious. But this envy, it's the epitome of darkness or ignorance, is envy. Krishna Surya Samaya Hoya Andhakar. Darkness cannot exist in the presence of the sun. Krishna is the sun. Maya cannot exist in the presence of Krishna. So if we're actually connected to Krishna, if we're actually experiencing Krishna, how could there possibly be envy? Because we're feeling Krishna's love and we're feeling our love for Krishna. And we understand how Krishna is intimately, personally dealing with everybody, even in feelings of separation. especially in feelings of separation. Sometimes we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam when Krishna goes to Mathura, the gopis are saying to those, now he's with the queens of Dwarka or he's with these beautiful princesses in Mathura. What to speak of the gopis are hearing that he's getting married to 16,108 wives and they're with Krishna and they're and we're, all, we're here in Vrindavan and separation. Of course, all those 16,108 wives are actually expansions of the gopis. Rupa Goswami describes in the Lita Madhava how the gopis expanded themselves to be Krishna's queens. Because Krishna cannot live without the gopis. But still, they're in Vrindavan too. And they're not <laughs> inconceivable pastimes. They're not envious. Krishna's reciprocating deeper, more personally and intimately with them in separation than he is with the queens of Dwarka. So how could there be envy? Envy's darkness. Envy means we're not connected to Krishna, hardly at all, if anything. Therefore, if we feel envious, we should really feel separation from Krishna. Instead of thinking by, act, by trying to resolve this envy by acting in a way that's competitive, that only perpetuates the disease. In that state, there's only one solution. 
to transcend that disease by feeling Krishna's love, by connecting with Krishna, who's Rasa Bihari, by taking shelter of Krishna, taking shelter of his holy names. And how they were enjoying together, joking, laughing, smiling. And they all took out their prasad. And because they're children, and they're very, very playful, and their playfulness really ultimately is to give pleasure to Krishna. Because Krishna likes when we're happy. In the spiritual world, everyone's happy because it makes Krishna happy to be happy. And when Krishna becomes happy, we become happy. And when we become happy, Krishna becomes more happy. And when Krishna becomes more happy, we become more happy. And we <laughs> could spend the rest of eternity explaining this with just those two sentences. It's ever increasing. Ever increasing happiness is, is, is not just some stagnant scientific theory or, or law. The ever-increasing happiness is the dynamics of the relationship of loving reciprocation. <laughs>